Hi, this is the second video in uh, the series on anxiety disorders and obsessive compulsive disorders. And we left off with this slide and we were talking about the sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for arousing us during times of fear. Um, and one way to think of anxiety is when the sympathetic nervous system is activated. So we have the heart rate, the sweating, the, um, the, the, warmth, the, the feeling of adrenaline, but there's no real external threat. Um, and let's look at, let's look at my beautiful image here. Do you like it? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So trait anxiety. Uh, trait anxiety is, um, it's a way to think about temperament, actually. And when we talk about temperament, um, it's temperament is thought to be something that we're born with. It's it's ingrained in us. It's not something that we choose. So you know how some people are really laid back and some people are really tightly wrapped. That's what temperament is about. That's what trait anxiety is about. Some people are born with more anxiety and some with less, and that's just the way it is. And uh, anybody who's had more than one baby knows that they have different temperaments. Some babies are really difficult to soothe. They're really fearful. They don't sleep well. They cry a lot. And some babies are just really chill and laid back and give you that, you know, toothless grin. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're basically really chill. So uh, when we think of trait anxiety... So you have my different uh, lines here, right? One way to think of it is uh, up here, let's say, would be panic. And down here would be, oh, I don't know, almost asleep. Really, really calm. And somewhere in the middle is, I, I, I don't like the word normal. But somewhere in the middle is an absence of either too little or too much. Okay. Now, the thing about trait anxiety is that everybody has their own normal. Um, so you have your, your set point, you know, when you're, when, when nothing is going on or nothing specific, you have your set point and that might be high, like the little dog that you saw in one of my videos. Uh, we joke that he's set to shiver. <laughs> so when nothing's going on, he's anxious and sitting there just shivering. And if something's going on, oh my God, it's just, he's out of control, right? So he would be, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to click on that. He would be this red line, you know, higher, closer to, to panic. And what you see here is these spikes are when things happen, right? Uh, we don't just go along without moving uh, constantly at the same level. Something happens, uh, maybe here you're giving a presentation in class and that really scares you. And maybe here it's something, I don't know, absolutely terrifying. You, uh, whatever it is that terrifies you, spiders, okay? <laughs> now, what you'll see is that there's overlap here, right, between the people. So somebody who has, who is, is highly anxious, even my little dog Doodle, when he's completely calm, like down here, he's close to what this person would be feeling when they're a little aroused. So there's some overlap, right? The blue line would be a more typical person who doesn't struggle with either anxiety or being very, uh, isn't somebody who's very, very laid back. And again, we go through life, you know, we have an exciting day, because, right, anxiety and excitement are closely related. So something happens and we have a day and then, you know, something here, maybe this person is presenting, but they're not as anxious as the other person, right? As the red person. And maybe here they're really anxious. So this is something that really scares this person, but then they're going to, you know, they'll settle down. They'll, they're going to have really calm times and come back to their kind of set place. Little ups, little downs, and maybe I made this chart look a little bit more active than it should be. I don't know. Now you have the person down here in green who is really laid back. 
it is really hard to get this person upset about anything, right? So they just doodle along in life and they're, um, you know, down here, really chill. Now this person has to give a presentation in class. And they're basically back to where somebody over here, that's just their set, right? That's their set place. When this person is anxious, they kind of overlap here. I hope this makes sense. We each have our own set rate. And we're pretty much born with it. It can be changed. We can actually change, we can have our trait anxiety changed by, um, let's say, trauma. Okay, and we're going to talk about that more when we talk about PTSD. But if you come from an environment where you are um, maybe not, uh, certainly it could be one traumatic event could change somebody's trait anxiety. Um, typically, you'll also find that even, a, say, a child who was born, you know, like this green line here, their temperament is basically calm. Um, if that child is constantly abused, or lives in a neighborhood that is really dangerous, or lives during a time that is dangerous, uh, maybe a war zone, or and especially if the danger is out of the person's control and um, has unexpected qualities to it. So for example, you might have a child who, uh, you know, is, is pretty average in terms of anxiety. And uh, this kid turns 10, um, maybe, you know, maybe she had a single mom and she was doing fine and she would come home from school every day and make herself a sandwich and start on her homework. Now mom remarries and stepdad isn't so nice. And she comes home from school, she makes a sandwich, she sits down to eat, and stepdad comes in behind her and smacks her up the head. It's like, what? You know, what happened? Well, you left your shoes by the door. I'm sorry, no. Let's say, let's say you came, you, you wore your shoes in the house. We don't wear shoes in the house. Okay. Well, the next day, when she comes home from school, she takes her shoes off, right? I mean, that's what you would do. She goes, she makes herself a sandwich, sits down to eat do her homework, he comes in and, you know, basically assaults her again. Maybe yelling, maybe hitting. And, you know, she's startled. She's startled out of her routine, her, her somewhat calm routine, right? And she's also taking abuse and experiencing fear. What happened this time? Uh, you left your shoes by the door and I tripped over them when I came in. Okay, well... The next day, she's really careful with her shoes. She puts them in the closet, right? And she goes and makes herself a sandwich, sits down. And maybe it's not the next day. Maybe it's been calm for a week, and now suddenly, one day, he comes home, and he's assaultive again. What happened? Uh, when she made a sandwich, she left some crumbs on the counter. So she's learning that there is no way that she can control his anger but she's going to keep trying right she's going to keep trying to do the right thing and she's going to start getting really vigilant start checking around her making sure that she's got all of her crumbs cleaned up her shoes are in the right place and that she's not doing anything annoying and not even knowing what annoying might be her trait anxiety is going to start rising in other words she's going to be more anxious even when she's not being threatened because life has become more threatening for her and she might stay that way now she might be changed so that's how somebody's trait anxiety can change it can happen like i said from war from a dangerous neighborhood terrorism abusive relationships um and uh when Look at this red person, we're just going to call them the red person, who was born pretty tightly wrapped. This person has, has higher anxiety than typical, right? And then they have spikes. Now, this spike might actually be a panic attack, right? This is really high. Somebody born 
with this much uh, trait anxiety is going to be more likely to develop an anxiety disorder. Somebody down here is going to be a lot less likely to develop an anxiety disorder. This person already tends towards it. This person, it takes a lot of work to get them anxious. It doesn't mean that they won't have other issues, maybe. But anxiety probably won't be one of them. Okay, and I'm going to end this video here.